The inaugural Robert Mockmer lecture focused on vitrectomy for vision degrading myodysopsia. That's a rather awkward term, but specifically selected to focus people's attention on the subject of vitreous floaters, which have not been considered a disease in the past, but if evaluated in the right way, are indeed a disease and deserve a name that sounds like a disease. So as awkward as it might be, vision degrading myodysopsia is the term that I ended up with. Well, that's a rather general question. And, and I think that um, instrumentation getting smaller and uh, methods improving as they have over the last couple of decades uh, is predictably going to progress. But more importantly than the technologic advances is uh, our understanding of disease pathogenesis, the natural history of the diseases, when to intervene and um, what to do, and more importantly, what not to do. Because as you learn and experience vitreo retinal surgery, you realize that staying out of trouble is very important. And overdoing things is um, opening the door to disaster. You're your own worst enemy when inside the eye and you need to identify the problem, fix it, and leave. There will be advances in technologies. There may be laser-based systems that will improve. Uh, I'm hopeful that our understanding of the pathophysiology of vitreoretinal diseases, and specifically vision-degrading myodysopsia, will lead to less invasive treatments. If you look at the history and the evolution of therapeutics in medicine in general, we do nothing when we know nothing. When we know a little bit, the first thing we do is operate. As we learn more about a disease, we replace surgery with pharmacotherapy. And when we really understand a disease, we can prevent it from ever happening. So I predict that there'll be a transition from the surgical arena to the pharmacal, pharmaceutical arena. Uh, as we know more about diseases, pharmacologic vitriolysis is a very good example of how drugs can be used to treat problems that have been treated surgically up until now. But as we understand disease pathogenesis better, that will be replaced with drug therapies. As young ophthalmologists always do, one tends to focus upon details and not see the forest for the trees. One tends to obsess over lesser important things than the broader philosophy, which is really more important than exactly how you do something. It's more important to know when to do it and more importantly, when not to do it. And so, my message to young ophthalmologists would be to take a step back and see the entire forest and understand the importance of the thought process, not necessarily the technical aspects of what you're doing surgically, but upon whom you're doing it and exactly why you're doing it and then how you're doing it. So for example, vision degrading myodysopsia can be cured with probably the easiest operation that we do, meaning within the spectrum of vitreous and vitreoretinal surgery, this is the easiest. It's quite simple and quite fast, but key to its success is patient selection. And that's been the emphasis of our R&D for the last decade or so. And I believe we have formulated a very useful approach to evaluate objectively and quantitatively both vitreous structure and visual function. And that is the key to success, not how you do the surgery. Certainly that's true in this instance because the surgery is rather simple, even though we modified how vitrectomy is to be done for these particular patients. But the lesson that I'm trying to impart to young ophthalmologists 
is to think rather than do and to value the philosophy that underlies what we do more than exactly how we do it because everyone's going to find their own way and their own path to success surgically but more important than how you do something is when and why do you do it.